Kyle keeps encouraging me, hey, you know, solo over when he's back in tracks, you know, we keep putting him out weekly. But the reality is, you, I may know all this technical knowledge, but I can't apply any of it. I don't really know how to do that. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel kind of stuck, you know. So it's, it's kind of the opposite of what Matt, I think you were describing a minute ago, where you have all that feeling and, you know, you just kind of, you could just vibe what needs to be. Well, I'm kind of the opposite of that. I'm just like, I, I can see all the visualization and tying it to all kinds of cage stuff, but I can't make anything musically. And it's really frustrating. I and mean, I'm not quite sure. Do I just stick with it? And, you know, as we get into some of the, the later modules, like 44 and 45, we'll get into some of that solo crafting or I'm not, I'm not really sure if I'm approaching it the right way. Mm-hmm. Cause I spent probably like in module 42, for example, I think that's the one where you introduce all the different blues forms. I've probably spent two months on that. I would guess maybe three. So, and I still don't feel like I have them down well enough that, you know, they're just in my mind and I can switch between the different ones and in different keys. I mean, it's just, is that normal or? I don't, yeah, I don't know. That, that is normal, actually. <laughs> it, it is normal for like, you know, you you, uh, you learn all these shapes and then you feel like you have them down because you can play them in time with a metronome. But then when you go to actually improvise with them, like it's like you freeze up. Uh, that is a very normal thing. What I would say to you is, um, have you ever tried practicing perhaps like you know, with a backing track, you put the backing track on and then you take one of these shapes and then you just, you play the shape and just try to like, you know, make it musical. You know what I mean? Well, I think I am, but then, you know, when, when the new track comes out, like last week, the Tasty Blues track or whatever it was, and I put it on, I was like, I don't even know where to start. You know, I, yeah, I know all these shapes and everything, but it doesn't it doesn't sound musical to me it just sounds like i'm running scales or something and so right so to me it sounds like you actually don't know the shapes as well as you might think you know them because wow. if, if it sound it, it i mean it takes like a shitload of repetition and, and uh like but not only that uh, like to get these scales down it is like it, it takes the type of practice where you actually use it and everything if you sound if, if you if you're telling me that you feel like you sound scalar what you're really telling me is it it sounds like you don't know them as well as you think you know them to be quite honest because like when you look at your fretboard like you shouldn't feel trapped uh I'm not saying that you feel trapped but you shouldn't sound scalar if you know them very well right like if you get like give me a, a, a shape phrygian phrygian okay any key like any note i'm sure sorry um uh, i guess uh we can do like c phrygian cool yeah uh-huh. i mean it doesn't matter too much right but like not really when i look at c phrygian like like yeah that's the scale but like i'm not when i if i'm going to improvise using that scale like i don't have to think uh, like I don't have to sound scalar when I do it, right? And let me, uh, I just changed shit. Sorry, that was probably loud. I, I accidentally bumped the mic. But like, I, I changed my uh, tone here. That's probably not too loud. Is that too loud? No, that's good. But anyway, so it's like, you know. Right, like. I just used Phrygian to play that. Did it sound like Phrygian? I mean, a little bit because I am using that mode, but it, did it sound scalar? I hope not, because that wasn't my intention. My intention was to sound melodic, right? So, like, I would maybe, I think it's more of a mindset thing as well. Like, don't view them, like, you know them as scales because that's what they are, but when you go to improvise, don't actually think of them as scales. Just think of them as like notes that you can pick to create something that sounds melodic. Does that make sense? Yeah. And like, you could practice, it, it's kind of hard to practice, uh, well, I guess it depends how you look at, it, look at it. I was gonna say it's hard to practice playing melodically, but it can also be very easy. Like if, if I just descend the scale. I 
mean, that already sounds more melodic than this. Right? And I'm playing the notes in order. I'm just trying to, like, you know, do something different with them. off the top of my head, but I'm still kind of being scalar with them, you know what I mean? That's, I was going to say, that's literally the way I learned how to improvise by yeah. taking the scale and just taking the notes and putting some breath between each note and then also sort of learning on where to land with, with the accents uh you know like on either on the tonic or the third or the fifth you know if you end up landing on a on a on a, on a seventh uh, it, it could sound it might be in key but it might sound weird um yeah. so uh so yeah I, I used to practice this going up a scale as if you can't tell just going up a scale uh, and just trying to find a melody with each note. So it, even though it was a scale I was playing, there was there was a melody to it, and I got comfortable making noise uh, over a background track. Track, you know, that's really what that did for me. So, uh, but yeah, that's awesome advice. That's okay. Yeah, but... Thank you. Yeah, no worries, man. Um... Can I add one comment too? Go for it. Is that, yeah, uh, I, I, I also, I, I don't know if it helps anything, but like the one thing I, I get told a lot uh, is uh, to think of scales uh, in terms of rhythm more than more than pitch, because like the, the pitch is always, go, the pitches are going to work if you're in the right scale. Uh, and, and it's more about thinking how to move rhythmically around it. Oh, and play around with rhythms. I don't know if, if that makes any sense, but like that's kind of how, how I thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it does make sense because like I, I think about that. Like if, if I were going to think rhythmically and play the scale like just linearly, then I, maybe I could play it like this. Oh, see that actually tripped me up. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm playing the scale linearly, but it, I'm also giving it a specific rhythm, right? Um, and yeah, Mark, uh, you, you might actually, like when it comes to knowing the scales, you might actually not know them, uh, like, like you might actually know them decently well. Uh, you've just never tried this approach. So I think trying this approach will uh, patch any holes that you might have. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's like a different type of practice. You know what I mean? Because it sounds like you've already put like, you've already put a lot of work into actually learning and memorizing the shapes. Um, but now you have to like switch the way you're practicing and actually start practicing implementing them and uh, creating melodies and uh, trying to sound more musical. Uh, so yeah, it's like a different type of practice. Yeah, I just just like, um, you know, I don't run the scale straight up and down anymore. It's only in thirds now or something else, right? Just so, I don't know. Hopefully somehow that bridge will happen naturally. I don't know. I'll just keep keep trying. Yeah, you'll get it. And another thing as well is this practice is actually more fun anyway. Because, you know, you're not just sitting there fucking doing yeah. this all day. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, 